Hi, I'm Hoodie here, and this is the story of my fortress of mandatory happiness. I've had the idea for a fortress where every dwarf has to be happy for a couple months. In fact, I attempted it back in August, and some of the first videos on my channel were set in my first attempt at a fortress of mandatory happiness. That one fell apart because the yearly goblin sieges were bumming people out. But this week I decided to tackle the challenge once again, but with some caveats. I restricted the population to 40 to keep a better handle on everyone in the fort. I just wanted a fortress with exclusively happy dwarves, even if it was a small fortress. So I embarked on a nice section of the map with a river running through and fields and mountains all around. I made sure to bring along a good supply of alcohol to start us off before I got a still up and running. A drunk dwarf is a happy dwarf after all. We arrived in slate 19 of the year 226 and promptly got to work. There were no real cliffs around to dig into, so I just dug straight down to set up. About five layers below ground, I built up workshops and stockpiles on one side of the main hall, and bedrooms, a dining room, and a kitchen area on the other side. All these rooms were filled with fine furniture. Stone tables and thrones for the dining room, and beds and cabinets for the bedrooms. Around this time, our first migrants arrived, expanding our number to 13. When the outpost liaison arrived, I requested all the alcohol they could produce at the highest priority. But at the same time, I also added a path leading from the food stockpile up to our farm, so we could produce some alcohol of our own. After building an atom smasher to destroy our garbage, and a well so that we wouldn't die in the winter, all the necessities of a fortress were in place. After getting more migrants, my efforts to smooth out the fortress were doubled, and the bedroom zone was expanded to accommodate a full 40 dwarves. To lift the spirits of the fortress, a tavern named the Inky Harvests was created. I hoped that travelers and performers would come and raise my dwarves out of their neutrality. At this point, it had been about a year since the outpost liaison had come, and so he returned with a bunch of booze, just like I requested. Stone trinkets for alcohol was an easy trade to make. We had had two boring, successful strange moods before, but after the trade caravan left, we had our first failed strange mood. This one went sideways when I misinterpreted his requests and failed to cut any gems for him. After a while, he went stoke raving mad and shed his clothes all over the workshop district. I knew he would eventually tire himself out and die of dehydration, and so I preemptively dug out a graveyard so his body wouldn't linger in the common areas for too long. Seeing him go mad was already enough of a bummer for everyone. While all of this was happening, I had put a mason to work constructing statues, and she had gotten pretty good at it, and so I had enough to put one in each bedroom, and also in the corners of the dining room and tavern. Now my dwarves couldn't turn a corner without coming face to face with a masterpiece. I figured there was no way they could stay neutral now. By this point I was nearly two years into the fortress, and I had converted a total of five people from neutral to positive, so I figured I had to raise my game. I designated the central wall and the outside walls of the bedroom area to all be engraved. Surely they would have to appreciate the out sooner or later. When the central wall was done, I checked on some of the engravings, and found that they varied wildly in complexity. Right next to each other on the wall were simple things like some parsnips or an ocelot, and much more complex things like a deity of wealth surrounded by dwarves playing out some kind of scene. Around this time, I was told that the fisherman who had gone stark raving mad had gone missing, but I could see his body in the corner of the mason's workshop, so I had to give the mason a job to do so she could find and then dispose of the body. Ghosts are bad for morale after all. Despite all this, my dwarves seemed unmoved from neutrality about the whole situation. 35 neutrals and 5 positives still. It is also worth noting that I had my cook producing fine meals on repeat for these dwarves. Usually I just make them eat raw mushrooms all day, so I was really making an effort for these guys that was going unappreciated. It might be worth noting that a large segment of my population was made up of children and babies who I do not know how to please. I made their parents join the military so they could learn new skills, but the children I just left to do their own thing and hoped that they would come around. Around this time I also noticed that people were getting annoyed at drinking all the varied and lovely alcohols I had bought for them without a goblet or mug so I produced a couple dozen. I was starting to think that these dwarves were acting a little spoiled. Moods did take a bit of a hit a little later, when a carpenter was struck by a strange mood, claimed a workshop, and then went berserk when he didn't have the materials he wanted. He lashed out and attacked some dwarves, but was beaten up and killed pretty handily. On the plus side, I had traded for all kinds of exotic human booze just a couple minutes before that, 
that seemed to be enough for the happy dwarves, two of whom made it into the top tier of happiness. Despite my best efforts, moods were not trending in the right direction. The expedition leader was possessed, claimed a workshop, and then also went berserk and attacked some dwarves. Luckily, no children were around, and he was taken care of quickly, but having to kill two of your fellow colonists in a matter of months seems a little rough. And indeed, we dropped from six to five happy dwarves. Soon after electing a new expedition leader, he also got possessed. Fortunately, he found the materials he needed and constructed a wooden splint, which I have to assume will find some use among the dwarves that have been beaten up by their berserk brethren. While all of this has been going on for the past year or so, I had been digging down, looking for adamantine, because surely adamantine would make my dwarves happy, right? Anyway, at this point I found a great magma sea, and with it, the adamantine I was looking for. All it took was accidentally melting my miner in a magma flow. I was then told that my fortress had attracted no migrants, even though I had room for one. I was confused. Did these dwarves not want to be happy? Why wouldn't you come here, to a veritable paradise of out and fine dining? I had a lot of questions for my dwarves, and why they refused to be happy, but I had to continue focusing on the fortress. We mined out a relatively safe level of the adamantine vein, and then a little while later, the miner that I had melted returned as a ghost, and made one of my living dwarves throw a tantrum. I quickly set up a memorial slab for him, before he could bring the mood down even more. With our adamantine mined out, and the strands being extracted, it was then time to build a metalworking setup. So I dug out an extra area behind the finished goods stockpile, and built a wood furnace, a smelter, and a metalsmith's forge, as well as a stockpile for bars and blocks. My dwarves immediately went to work producing an abundance of adamantine wafers, one of which was stolen when another of my dwarves was possessed. It was used to create an adamantine amulet, which I then put on a pedestal in the tavern, so that my dwarves would hopefully finally feel something in their cold, neutral hearts. Then I melted a bunch of the adamantine together into a statue that was placed in the dining room. At this point, I was just hoping that sheer opulence would drag my dwarves out of neutrality. Soon after, another dwarf got possessed. But this time when he went berserk, it went very wrong, and he killed two little dwarflings before he finally suffocated. It had been four years since I started, and we had still only peaked at six happy dwarves, but this was the final straw. At this point, I knew what I had to do. The shortcut to having a fortress with exclusively happy dwarves became obvious. Just kill all the neutral dwarves. I marked down the names of the six dwarves who were happy, and put the adults among them into a squad. Everyone else in the fortress was sent down into a burrow made out of the adamantine vein I had mined out. There they all were, with their neutral expressions, neutral body language, and as I had come to find out, neutral personalities. I cut them off from the fortress, and then instructed them to dig into the Great Magma Sea. As I saw the number hit zero, I knew it was done. I did what I had to do. This video isn't called my fortress of optional happiness after all. But still, when I looked at my five happy dwarves, I couldn't help but wonder if there was a better way. I shouldn't think about that too long though, it wouldn't be very happy of me. Thanks for watching.